All right, so there are three types of plate boundaries. We have what we call divergent boundaries, uh, convergent boundaries, and transform or strike slip boundaries. Now, the first one we're gonna talk about is a divergent boundary. The word divergent means splitting apart. These are the boundaries where you have a crack and two plates are moving away from each other. Okay, so if you look here, there's your crack. You see the lava coming up out of there and you see how this plate is going this way and this plate is going this way. This would be an example of a divergent boundary. We find them quite often in the ocean. This is a place where you get new crust. As the crust split open, they cause an opening. That lava is going to rise up, cool and make new crust. So this is actually a place on the earth where the earth's crust is getting newer or younger and it's growing. Okay, and so as you get further and further away from the break, the crust is going to get older and older. Your newest crust will be right here, right close to the break, and your oldest crust will be as far away as you can get. Now, the interesting thing is that it spreads evenly on both sides. So here's your crust, let's say it's brand new from today. The crust here and here would be a day old, two days old, three days old. So if you go the same distance away from the rift anyway, it's the same age. So if you go 50 miles this way, that crust will be roughly the same age as 50 miles that way. Does that make sense? Okay, and so we find this a lot of places. One of the places we find this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There's also one in the Pacific Ocean as well, okay? This is what it actually looks like beneath the ocean. You can actually see the break in the crust. Now, there are places where this sticks up, okay? The most common place is in Iceland. In Iceland, this is the rift. So this is brand new crust that these people are standing on. This is the North American plate here. This is the Eurasian plate here. And these two are splitting apart. Every year, these two split apart by a couple of centimeters a year, about an inch or so, <clears throat> inch to two inches a year. So every year, North America gets just a little bit further away from Europe. Now, this is common, you can walk through it, but a lot of times when this crack happens you get a fissure eruption we talked about this yesterday and you can get volcanic activity but once again this is not ridiculously too dangerous i wouldn't walk directly through it but it's not a violent explosive reaction that you get all right the next type of boundary we have are what we call convergent convergent means it's coming together so these are two plates that are slamming into each other think of a head-on car crash okay sometimes these are referred to subduction as subduction boundaries because usually what happens is one plate goes under the other now there are different types of convergent subduction boundaries, okay? The first type is oceanic versus continental. So what are we talking about? Remember, we talked about the different types of crust. We said oceanic crust tends to be made out of basalt, okay? It tends to have a higher density, okay? Whereas continental crust tends to be made out of granite and tends to have a lighter density. So what happens with this one is you have two plates, one going this way and the other one going this way, and they hit in a head-on collision. And when they hit, like you see here, so here you have the oceanic plate that was moving like this, and the continental plate that was probably moving like this. And what happens is, since the oceanic crust is denser and it's heavier, it's gonna get pushed down. When it gets pushed down, we say that it is subducting. So this is a subduction boundary. Subduction means one plate gets forced underneath the other plate. And it's always the denser plate. So since oceanic crust is denser, then continental crust, it gets pushed down and underneath. When that happens, you're going to form a trench, okay? An underwater, usually canyon, very, very deep, okay? Wherever we find trenches on the earth is usually a sign of this process happening. So the Marianas Trench and stuff like that would be an example of this happening, okay? And so what happens is the oceanic crust gets forced underneath it because it's denser. And when it gets forced underneath it, it's gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter and some of that crust gets melted. So subduction zones <clears throat> or convergent boundaries are the opposite of divergent. Whereas in a divergent, you get brand new crust and you make new crust in a subduction zone or a convergent boundary, you eat up old crust. And so it's like a recycling process. One place makes new stuff, this breaks up old stuff. Now, as it goes down, it's gonna melt. Some of it will melt all the way down here, but some of it, can melt and since it's now a liquid it's got a lower density than the stuff around it it's going to bubble up and we talked about this process yesterday and what you will get is you will get a magma chamber 
that forms. You see it right there. And that magma chamber, if it finds a weak spot in the continental crust, can form a volcano. And usually what we'll actually find is a series of volcanoes relatively close to the coastline, not directly on it, but relatively close to the coastline in a chain. We call that a continental volcanic arc. So that's the series of volcanoes that forms on the continental crust because the oceanic crust gets forced underneath it, melts, and then punches its way through. We find this all along the west coast of the United States. This is the city of Seattle. Okay, you can see the home of the Seattle Mariners right there and the home of the Seattle uh, Seahawks football team right there. And back there, you can see Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier is a volcano. Okay, it is part of the volcanoes that we find in Washington State, Oregon, and all along the West Coast. It is what we call a stratovolcano or a composite volcano. Okay, and it will go off and that will cause a whole lot of problems for the people who are living right here. Okay, in fact, a very close neighbor to this was this mountain. This is Mount St. Helens, which was located in Washington State. This is Mount St. Helens, the way it looked prior to May of 1980. Very pretty, looked very similar to the one you just saw. And it was a volcano. We thought it was a quiet volcano. We thought it was dormant or extinct, more than likely extinct, because it hadn't gone off as long as Europeans had been here. But in May of 1980, it went from this to this. Okay, it blew off the top chunk of the volcano, and today it looks like that. Okay, one of the biggest volcanic disasters. Luckily, it's in an area of a national park, so there weren't a whole lot of people there. There were some people who lost their lives, unfortunately, some researchers and some locals who refused to leave. But this is an issue that we have. And so when we discover volcanoes along the edges of coastlines, we have a good indicator that just off that coastline, you will probably find a subduction. Now, if you have an oceanic versus oceanic plate hitting each other, okay, well, what's gonna happen? You're still gonna get subduction. But what's gonna happen is the older oceanic plate is gonna dip under the younger oceanic plate. Okay, why? Because the older one's got more sediment on top of it, so it's heavier, so it's gonna get pushed down and you're getting an incredibly deep trench. And then the same thing's gonna happen, okay? It's gonna get pushed down, it's gonna melt, and what you're gonna get is a bunch of little volcanic islands, what's called a volcanic island arc. The islands of Japan and a lot of the islands of the Philippines and Indonesia form through this process. And it's the same basic thing, okay? So if you look here, you see all those little triangles, those all represent volcanoes okay throughout indonesia throughout the philippines okay sumatra all these places you see all this okay oh and you can see the trench right here you see the deep trench right there that dark mark you see another trench over there you can see a trench over here okay this is an area this is one of the most volcanic areas in the world indonesia is the most volcanic nation on the planet okay and you get lots of places that look like this this is a volcano called anak krakatau it actually sits where another volcano used to be that basically blew itself to smithereens in 1883. One of the biggest disasters that we had seen as a human species and recorded. And then this one came around about 40 years later. So volcanoes kind of have this habit of coming back. The last type of convergent boundary we have is a continental plate versus another continental plate. This call, results in what we call orogenesis. I'll talk about what that means. When we have continental versus continental, Okay, what does that mean? It means you have granite and other granite. And when these two collide, what's gonna happen is like what happened in modern day India. You're gonna form mountains. The Himalaya mountains were formed through this process. Orogenesis, that word that we just saw, is the fancy geologic way of saying mountain making. Okay, the formation of the Himalayas, the formation of the Andes. Okay, these are all oral events of orogenesis, the formation of the Rocky Mountains, even the formation of the Appalachians and the Adirondacks in New York State, although that's much older orogenesis, it's still orogenesis. And one of the driving causes, although not always, is some form of plate tectonics. The Himalayas, being the tallest mountains in the world, were basically formed because you had one continent slamming into the other continent. Since they both have roughly the same amount of density of rocks, neither one can kind of get shoved underneath the other one. Okay, and what ends up happening is it just piles up and up and up and up. And so you get incredibly huge mountain ranges. Mm. The final type of boundary is what we call transform or strike slip boundaries. And strike slip actually makes a little bit more sense. Because what basically happens with these guys is these are sections of the, the planet where two plates are trying to slide past each other. But they come in contact and they 
rub up against each other negatively. And so what you end up with is you got like this plate wants to go this way, this plate wants to go this way. This right here would be the transform boundary. Okay, a better example of that would be this. This is the San Andreas Fault. Everybody's heard of this. This is the fault that's running or exists in California. What happens here is you have two plates. You have what's called the San, uh, Juan de Fuca plate and you have the North American plate. And one plate wants to move this way and the other plate wants to move this way. And so what happens is think of you walking down the hallway in school. You want to go towards the end of the hallway by the windows. Your friend or the person walking next to you wants to go the opposite way towards the auditorium. You two rub shoulders and what happens? You get stuck for a second. So you, you want to go like this. He wants to go like this and you get stuck and you get stuck and you get stuck and pressure builds up until eventually one of you goes, right? And you go forward. The other person comes this way. Sorry, it's hard to do with one hand. Okay, and so what happens is this gets stuck and it builds up a lot of pressure and a lot of pressure. And then eventually, once the pressure gets too much, this guy's gonna jerk forward this way, this guy's gonna jerk forward this way, and you're gonna get an earthquake, okay? The strike slip boundaries have a lot of earthquakes, okay? And what you end up with is a visual like this. This fence was built on top of a strike slip boundary. This part of the fence, right? The ground wanted to move this way. This part of the fence, the ground wanted to move this way. They were stuck together. It had been for hundreds of years that nothing moved. And then one day you had an earthquake and one slid forward this way and the other one slid forward that way. Finally, we want to look at this page of your reference table. We've looked at this before for latitude and longitude, but we are now going to talk about the different plates. So if you look here, you have all the plates. Okay, they're all named. You've got major plates and minor plates on here as well. Okay, and if you look, this tells you the way that the plates are moving and describes some of the different types of boundaries that we have along with the latitude and longitude. So you're going to be responsible for that. So if we look down here at the key, okay, you've got the relative motion at the plate boundary. So for example, this is telling you that this part of the plate wants to move this way while this part of the plate wants to move that way. Over here, it's telling you that this plate is going this way and this plate, the African plate, is going that way. Okay, now it gives you an indicator to show you what the different boundaries look like. So if you've got two arrows that are parallel to each other and they are moving in opposite directions, that is a transform boundary. So for example, the San Andreas Fault. Over here, that would be another one. Okay, down here at the Scotia Plate, that would be another one. Okay, divergent pl plate boundaries. You've got two arrows headed in completely opposite direction, but they're not drawn parallel to each other. Okay, they're on the same line. So that would be a divergent boundary. That would be a divergent boundary. Divergent boundary. Okay, Did everybody see the difference between a divergent boundary here and a strike slip or transform boundary there. And finally, the convergent zone. Okay, the convergent zone plate boundary shows you down here would be something like this. Okay, and it tells you which plate is subducting and which plate is overriding. The overriding is the plate that stays on top. The subducting plate is the plate that goes underneath. So for example, if you look here, okay, this is telling you that the overriding plate here is the Pacific plate and the subducting plate is the Indo-Australian plate right here. Okay, and how do you tell? The two arrows are crashing into each other, head-on collision. Okay, now there are some boundaries that we're not 100% sure of. We know that there's a boundary there, but we don't know exactly what's going on. You have the one here, complex or uncertain plate boundary. Okay, so you have, you know, images over here and stuff like that that are going on. And the final thing we're going to talk about is what we talk about is hotspots. There are places on the globe where you get volcanism that doesn't make any sense. Okay, we call those hotspots. A lot of times they're smack dab in the middle of a plate. Best example of that would be the Hawaiian hotspot. The Hawaiian hotspot is an example of a place where there's just like a weak spot in the plate and lava is pushing its way up. It's forcing its way up and it's punched its way through the middle of the plate. And so you get a bunch of volcanic activity. Another example would be the Yellowstone hotspot over here. Okay. Sometimes you do find hotspots on plate boundaries. So for example, uh, this one down here or the Iceland hotspot up here. But a lot of times they tend to be just smack dab in the middle of the ocean. You get volcanic islands there or volcanic features there. And what happens is as the plate moves, what you're going to end up getting is a trail of volcanic islands. That's what you should have seen in your lab and that's what you've seen in classes. Okay, there are a trail of islands working all the way up here that at one time were over the hotspot. But as the plate has drifted to the north, those islands have gotten dragged away from it and their volcanism has stopped.